It's the opening day of October here in hour number two of this Tuesday, live on the early line. And a beautiful thing has happened, Joe. Where the first day of this new month in October is the actual first day of what we call October baseball. That's the Major League Baseball postseason that starts on this Tuesday. All four wild card rounds are about to begin. All four sets in this wild card round a quadruple header of game ones on the opening day of october here on this tuesday but we got pretty close to the end of september being the end of the regular season a double header yesterday in atlanta to officially end out the regular year in 162 around mlb between the braves and the mets we needed both games yesterday of course here was what was at stake entering the doubleheader in atlanta if the mets swept it would have been new york and arizona into the postseason if the braves swept it would have been atlanta and arizona into the postseason if the two teams split the doubleheader both the mets and the braves would go and that's what happened but just saying that does not necessarily tell the whole tale. What a game it was. Game 161 between the Mets and the Braves. New York victorious 8-7 to as the money line underdog. Tyler McGill, not bad, did give up three runs. Ramon Laureano, a two-run shot that put Atlanta up three zip. It's where the score stood entering the eighth inning. And Spencer Schwellenbach, the rookie out of Nebraska, was absolutely shoving on the bump, but did give up an opening double to start off the eighth. Schwellenbach, seven innings of work, only an earned run allowed, and just four hits. From when Schwellenbach got ousted, the Mets took advantage. They scored six runs in the top of the eighth. All right, now they're leading six to three. Comfortable. Should be an easy victory. Enter Edwin Diaz, who has not been easy this year. Bases got juiced. It was a 6-4 game. Ozzy Albies at the plate. A bases clearing three RBI double for Atlanta to put the Braves back on top, 7-6 to six in the bottom of the eighth. So, Atlanta leads 7-6, to six, entering the final frame. And Francisco Lindor, if Shohei Otani did not exist, if Otani still played in the American League, that guy on your screen would be the National League MVP this year. Lindor enters with a two-run home run to put the Mets in front again, 8-7. to seven. And Diaz finally pitches well in the home half of the ninth shutting the door the new york mets take game one a long recap to clinch their playoff berth the mets win game one eight to seven so in game number two chris sale was expected to start back spasms keep him on the shelf grant holmes gets the start for atlanta and the braves do win against a mets lineup that was not necessarily the same lineup for game 161 joey lucchese made a second start of the year and the Braves do hold on for a three nothing shutout in game two the two teams split the double header both teams clinch a playoff berth in the National League all right I am done the regular season is done the National League playoff picture is now set it was the best two innings of baseball that you will have seen all year and those that tuned in uh, might have been going, oh, great, 3 nothing. What a boring, you know, swelling back was fantastic. But that eighth and ninth inning, if we get any of that drama, which we know we're going to because it certainly felt like a playoff game, we get any yep. of that heading in over the next month, Ben, it's going to be maybe the best. And we got extra teams. We got short series. Uh, this is going to be must-watch television, the Major League Baseball playoffs starting today. Yes, it is certainly going to be. And because of the results of yesterday, not only are Mm -hmm. the D-backs now planting their winter vacations, but because of Atlanta winning the second game of the doubleheader, not only do the Braves earn that National League playoff spot, their seventh consecutive year into the postseason, Atlanta wins the regular season series against the New York Mets in game 13, 7 to 6. So they hold the tiebreaker advantage, which means the Braves are the five seed. They're in the wild card round, taking on San Diego. 
They head out to Southern California late night against the Padres. The Mets, the sixth and final seed, they head to the state of Wisconsin to take on the Brew Crew. Milwaukee, of course, the champions of the National League Central. We will get to every series in the wild card round. All four that start today with their opening game on the opening day of October. Not only a game one preview, but of course, what these sets have at stake. The odds associated to get to the division round in MLB. But Joe, when you look at the National League playoff picture, it was not confirmed yesterday. It is now Mm. made official. The Dodgers, the top team, the Phillies in the two spot. Both L.A. and Philadelphia earned the opening round by. Milwaukee was the first team because of such a substantial cushion in the National League Central to clinch a divisional crown this year. They host the Mets. And let's start there, Joe. Same price for both Milwaukee and New York at 11-1 to to win the National League pennant. Is it disrespectful of Milwaukee? Is it too respectful of New York? What do you make of two teams, one a division winner that cruised to a divisional crown and has home field advantage in this best of three series, having the same exact pennant price as the wild card team in New York? Yeah, well, it's uh, it's kind of crazy here because this Brewers-Mets series, I think, is huge advantage to the Brewers. And they've already proven that, Ben. What, winning five of six already this year against them? Uh, they also, they run the bases better. They're a better defensive team. Uh, I mean, they defense base running all the little things, right? The number one team in the playoffs right now are the Milwaukee Brewers. Nobody does small ball better than Milwaukee. And in a short series, Ben, that's the difference between winning the series and advancing and going home and being one and done. I, you know, it's unfortunate it ended up the way it did for the Mets because I would have rather have seen the Mets against anybody other than this Milwaukee Brewers team, which has proven to be a giant pain in the Mets behind. And that was not going to be the case entering this year. They played in the very Mm -hmm. first series against each other starting this season, a year where the odds for Milwaukee were not overly optimistic. The Brew Crew Mm -hmm. swept New York to start off this season. A slow opening half start, a slow first two months for New York is the reason they're a wild card team and frankly did not win the National League East. I'll detail that in just a second. But the Brewers under Pat Murphy, after Craig Council shocked everybody, leaving Milwaukee to go to Chicago to be the manager of the Cubs, doing the in-division move, oh man, Milwaukee was going to struggle. They had lost some of their best arms over the past couple years. It was a team that had struggled at the plate offensively despite winning records the last few seasons. Pat Murphy came in, more than likely going to win NL Manager of the Year, and they cruised to the National League Central. And even if you want to compare these teams straight up, face value, their in-season series against one another that the Brew Crew dominated, you also want to give Milwaukee the benefit of the doubt being at home for a best-of-three series. That's all the wild-card round is in Major League Baseball. Now, you could make the argument that Milwaukee, because they had clinched the divisional crown early in the NL Central, wasn't playing significant baseball in the final week and a half, where the New York Mets were already in a playoff atmosphere. Okay, we'll tell that to Milwaukee, who beat New York in two of three games in the second-to-last set, ahead of the doubleheader in Atlanta, when the Mets needed everything. Now, I will say this, and make this final point. The New York Mets were 24-33 and 33 at the end of May, nine games below 500. We know what June meant in the grimace era for New York. Since June 1st, Joe, nobody in baseball better than the Amazons. The Mets were 65-40, and 40, the best mark of the bigs in that span. Now the Americans next. Live right here on the early line, it is is a Tuesday, the opening day of October. We will preview each and every wild card series to start off the postseason in MLB after this. But just a reminder of where things stand around the American League playoff picture. This was done on Sunday when the regular season was supposed to end. The division winners, the New York Yankees in the top spot. The Guardians and the Astros did not each play one of their final games of the season so they stopped at 161 but Cleveland earns the opening round by 
in front of Houston. Cleveland could not be caught by the Astros. The game did not need to be played. Cleveland was not going to catch New York either. So Cleveland and New York, the opening round buys. The Yanks, the best price to win the American League pennant. The Orioles, by far the top wild card team in the American League. They swept the Twins to end out this season. And because of the Twins slide over the final month or so, the Royals and the Tigers take advantage. KC good down the stretch after snapping a seven-game skid last week that plagued their second to last week of the season. Nobody better than the Tigers since August 22nd. Detroit on fire into the postseason for the first time in a while. Joe, what do you make of the American League playoff picture as a whole? Yeah, it's uh, it's good. I, I still think the Yankees uh, are going to be your American League uh, winners. I do think it's going to be fascinating uh, along the way between these wild card teams, especially the old kids on the block versus the new kids here with the Tigers and the Astros. I don't know. The Orioles limping into the playoffs worries me a lot. I would love to figure out a way to back them here. I just don't see it done. But ultimately, I think you're in one and two seed. Are you one and two seed in the American League for a reason? And I think it's ultimately going to come down to them. Yeah, when you look at where things stand for both the Yankees and the Guardians, can Cleveland, although a lot of people have not been overly optimistic about the American League Central making a charge to a pennant Mm -hmm. race this year, they've got three of the six teams into the postseason. We look at the Yankees. This is their time. They have not won the pennant. They have not played in a World Series since their last World Series championship way back now in 2009, a decade and a half ago. Then there's the Astros, Joe. Not nearly as good win-loss record as the two teams in front of them that earned the opening round by. But what Houston has well in front of New York, well in front of Cleveland, well in front of pretty much everybody in either of the two leagues is that playoff pedigree. The Astros, whether it is was in their trash can banging era or now since they have been a clean franchise, the Astros have played in seven consecutive American League Championship Series. Nobody else can say that. Is the postseason pedigree enough for you to maybe wager on that plus 370 price for Houston? I I think it's going to play a big role uh, in this uh, game because it's such a short series. If it was a longer series, you got to start looking at, you know, full complement of starting pitching and those kinds of things there. We know the Tigers uh, who were what? Since August 1st, 34 and 19, one of the hottest teams in Major yeah. League Baseball as well as the American yeah. League. Uh, but the Astros weren't terrible either since that time frame, 32 and 21. But I think it's the the Astros knew, and it feels like they knew, Ben, that, hey, yeah, we weren't great early, but we just got to get there. We got to get in. We got to make sure we're healthy. And then I still think they have another gear, which is kind of scary. And I think the Tigers, once they hit adversity, which they didn't hit a lot of since August 1st. Right. I I think that's when uh, experience is going to come into it when it's the eighth or ninth inning with the game on the line. What does Detroit have? I think it's the edge totally to the Houston Astros. Yeah, and how could it not be, frankly, right? When you look at Mm -hmm. what Detroit did from August 22nd, they were four games below 500. They rallied to get back in. Nobody better in baseball from that time frame than the Tigers. You mentioned since August 1st. The Tigers at that record, the best in baseball in, or at least in the American League in that span. And Joe, we gave a lot of credit to the Mets, and rightfully so. 65-40 and since June 1st. The best record in the bigs after the first two months of this Major League Baseball season. Pretty similar script, though, for the Astros. Donnie and I had a joke here over the opening two months of this season. Where was the fork for the Astros? Could we put it in them? Did we have to hide it? Did we have to smash it? By the time they got to the middle of May, Houston started playing better baseball. But at the end of May, Joe, at the end, they were still eight games below 500. 25 and 33 the Mets were 24 and 33 Houston only ended up playing 161 games this year so their record from June 1st on 63 and 40 second best in the bigs beside the New York Mets so again you give the postseason pedigree to the Astros you look at the overall sample size of this season 
Houston's one of the best. And Joe, for a lot of this year, we saw the Astros trail in the odds category. For a lot of this year, it was the Yankees and the O's with the two best prices in the American League. Baltimore has been an even 500 team, 33 and 33 since the All-Star break. I wonder about the Orioles. Last year, the number one overall seed in the American League. They were bounced in their opening division series by the Rangers in a sweep. Did that young club learn from the experience, and can they now ride that momentum as a wild card team this time around? Yeah, I just don't. I, I think the reason that they were a 500 team after the All Star break at best is because I, I think the injuries to the pitching have finally caught up. Plus, I think they became very reliant on the long ball, then and not a whole lot else. I, I think there's too many warts on this Orioles team to consider them to be a contender coming out of the American League. At least at this They've point. They've also had so, yeah, so many injuries to the pitching staff for Baltimore yeah. this year, despite how good, how prolific, how young their offensive lineup is. The Tigers, by the way, 24-11 and 11 since August 22nd to earn this playoff spot, the best record in baseball, best record in baseball since September or in the month of September as well. The O's did rally, right? They swept the Twins to end out the regular season even though they had already clinched that playoff berth Baltimore ended up with a winning record in September but it wasn't picture perfect now a preview of the wild card set next all right now we get you ready for this quadruple header on the opening day of October it's the opening day of the major league baseball postseason all four wild card series that we have start today Four games with playoff baseball starting at 2.30 p.m. Eastern time this afternoon. So naturally, we go to the final game of the day in the final series of four that will begin in this wild card round. Because the Braves won the final game of the season yesterday in the second leg of the doubleheader against the Mets, not only did Atlanta earn their playoff berth, but again, because of the regular season tiebreaker against the Mets. They won seven, New York won six. The Braves are the five seed. So they make the long trip out to San Diego. It's the final game of four today. The Padres, a pretty hefty favorite. And Joe, when we first got word yesterday, before we compare this matchup, when we first got word yesterday that Chris Sale was going to start game two of the doubleheader to confirm Atlanta should have no issue earning that playoff bid. The line was nearly $5 in favor of the Braves on the money line. Then he was scratched due to back spasms. All right, I'll tell you my first natural inclination. They're just saving him for the opener of the postseason to try to take an early lead over San Diego. But then Brian Snitker, Atlanta's manager after, saying, no, these are actual back spasms. They are concerned they will not have the guy who is going to win the NL Cy Young Award for the entirety of this opening wild card round against San Diego and what his playoff future could be, even if the Braves earn a division series berth very much up in the air. It, it really is. And then you take it into the fact, Ben, that he's owed $22 million next year. He's got a club option for $18 million the following year. Don't forget, next year they get Spencer Strider back, Ronald Acuna Jr. back. I, I don't think they were just trying to, you know, pull a fast one and say, hey, can we get can we get to the playoffs without using Sale? I, I think they have a serious concern on his health. And with the back and the back being an issue, we know that ain't going to get any better. If he goes out there and takes three steps back because he tries to push himself, They got a decision to make on him because this guy's going to be a Cy Young winner this year. And you're going to owe this guy, you know, 22, 25, you know, almost $40 million over the next two years. Isn't it more important to keep him healthy uh, than anything else here over the next couple of years? So I'm wondering if we see him at all in this series. And injuries have been a story for Atlanta. The fact Mm. they even earned the seventh consecutive playoff bid for the Braves does say something. The Padres, as you saw, a hefty favorite now because they are a hefty favorite in game one. I still think, albeit on the road and on short notice, Chris Sale probably would have had the Braves as the short money line favorite in San Diego. We don't know the starting pitcher officially yet for the Braves there is some speculation but nothing confirmed we do know the starter for the Padres it's Michael King 
and the Padres are a mm. minus 166 home money line favorite today. Joe, Michael King has been darn good. We will preview these games a little bit later on. But the reason San Diego is now a minus 174 series favorite to win this best of three set and advance to the division series is because they can trust in King. He's 13-9 and nine this year with a 295 ERA. That ERA is the ninth best all around Major League Baseball. You know what's funny? San Diego has dropped four of King's last uh, six starts as a team but in those four L's for the Padres King has not allowed more than two earned runs it just goes to show you how good he has been even if the Padres have faltered a little bit in a couple of his last starts yeah and and he was much better in the second half of the season than he was in the first Ben. Yeah. so he actually got stronger as the season sure. went on which is interesting because it, he was a reliever this is his first full season as a starting pitcher, and he's already pitched more innings, uh, 70 more innings than he had from a year ago. He only pitched 104 innings a year ago. He's up to over 173 yeah. this year. So there's a lot of wear and tear in the arm, something he's not used to, but boy, is he we'll assimilated yeah. really, really well to the starting pitching. My goodness. S- spent the first five years of his MLB career with the New York Yankees and prior to last year Joe had never pitched more than 64 innings in a season but he's been darn good King has been better in the second half as have the Padres you compare these two teams they ended out the opening half before the all-star break against one another the Braves won that three-game set from that point though since the all-star break San Diego the best team in baseball 43 and 20 the record the Braves did everything they could to hold on and claim a playoff spot 36 and 31 since the all-star break two teams that know each other that will now start the postseason against one another the other wild card round of the NL up next we will preview every single series around the wild card round in MLB that starts today On the very first day of October. It is October baseball on the opening day of October with the opening day of the MLB postseason. So the Atlanta Braves earn the five seed with a victory in the second game of the doubleheader yesterday in the A. They travel out to San Diego to take on the Padres. A lot of questions around who the Braves will send out for game one in the series outlook because of it overall. Not nearly as many, Joe, from the odds perspective for the 3-6 matchup in the National League. The Milwaukee Brewers, the champions of the National League Central. The New York Mets, the best team in baseball since June 1st. Milwaukee, minus 134 as the series outright favorite the Mets, the underdog. It's a best of three series, and the odds makers think it could be two or three. Two and a half being the overall games of that series over under. But on the spread, you can see where the Mets are. That doesn't make any sense. The Mets minus one and a half at minus 350. That's got to be a plus one and a half. I'll confirm yes. that here in just a moment because the Mets being mm. in that spot would be the series mm. underdog. Joe, how do you see this series playing out, though? We use the odds to drive the conversation. Pretty much what we're asking. Can the Mets pull off the upset as they have been the best team in baseball since the start of June? Are we not giving enough credit to the Brewers? Are they going to win this series? Are we going to see it go the distance? That's just three games this week. Yeah, I I do think the Brewers have the edge certainly early on, right? I mean, the Mets have the lesser of the bullpens here uh, in this series. Uh, we also know they got to travel now here today, right? You got Nemo, Alonzo, Bader, uh, most of their starters. Matone, Edwin Diaz already pitched. Uh, they're they're going to be down, uh, and they are going to have a whole lot of guys in this lineup here that have had to play a whole lot of baseball here down the uh, down the stretch. So I also don't think the Mets have anybody truly elite starting pitching wise. Severino is good. But he's not going to be somebody that I think is going to overwhelm. Not to mention, I think the Brewers are worse against lefties than they are against righties. I think the Mm. Brewers get the first one here today. I wouldn't be playing any overs necessarily in this series. Uh, But I do think that uh, the Brewers have a pretty good shot of finishing this thing. out. I do think it goes three games. But I do think the Brewers pick up the first one and will eventually win the last one as well. 
Joey, Joey, Luis Severino has been really good or really bad for a good majority of this season. Last three mm-hmm. starts that he made, including last Tuesday, the opening game of the set against the Braves, he allowed four earned in only four innings. In fact, his last three starts, he gave up a total of 10 earned runs. That's not going to win you games now into the postseason. In fact, when you look at the last two months of his Major League Baseball season here, since the beginning of August, he has given up three-plus earned runs in, as I do the quick math here, six of his 10 starts. But in the other four, an earned run or less, it has either been pretty mediocre or pretty darn solid. Of course, the Mets hoping it is solid today. He will take on in the opening game of this three-game wild card set. Freddie Peralta at home. The Brew Crew, a minus 142 favorite to win this series. And as Joe mentioned earlier, Milwaukee has gotten the better of New York so far this season. Really, we use a couple of sets to describe how the bigger picture of this season has gone. The Brewers swept the Mets in the very first series of this year, way back at the end of March. Okay, Milwaukee better than we expected them to be. They entered the National League Central with the fourth best price to win the division this year because Craig Council jumped ship to Chicago and to the friendly confines. But Pat Murphy rallied this Brewers team to win the NL Central by a ton never really in question in the second half and beyond the Mets struggled in the opening two months of the year but since June 1st they were 24 and 33 at the end of May since June began that proud organization in its grimace era nobody better in baseball 65 and 40 and Joe because of it I think this series, and we might see it with Atlanta and San Diego, but the Braves could be a little bit shorthanded. But this series could continue a theme that we have seen throughout the opening two years of the expanded playoffs. MLB expanded the postseason in full starting in 2022, the additional wild card team. And we have seen wild card teams carry the momentum of having to play playoff type baseball down the home stretch. The New York Mets have have had to do that. Frankly, though, in their second-to-last series in Milwaukee, the Brewers were good. You thought on paper, all right, a playoff preview, a potential tough spot for the Mets, but the Brewers didn't need it. Milwaukee won two of three. But again, Joe, in the overall theme of the expanded postseason, wild-card teams have stayed hot, and we have debated rest versus rust. More so a picture, perhaps, in the division series, but could we see that here in the wild card round? Yeah, I, I mean, listen, if uh, if things hold serve like they've been over the last couple of seasons, Ben, there's going to be one of these uh, teams that everyone forgot or didn't think were going to make it uh, that are going to continue, that being either Detroit or the Mets in this particular case in the in the National League here. But it's an interesting tale because we've got these Best of three and best of five before we get to the pennant and the World Series, right? Right. You know, you're looking for teams that like to put the ball in play, that don't strike out a lot, that can play defense, can steal the extra base, uh, defensively can hold down. I mean, they're not the greatest hitted team in the world, the Brewers, but they don't strike out a ton, and they're very good defensively, great bullpen, and, of course, they run the bases better than most. So this is a its a reason why this has been a tough matchup for the Mets all year, and I don't see it being any easier in this one. I think yeah. if the Mets can get by the Brewers, well, you need to seriously consider them being able to run the table into the World Series. And, and Joe, you know what's crazy, as we said earlier, both of these teams that will face off in the wild card round, despite the Brew Crew being the series favorite, despite mm-hmm. Milwaukee having home field advantage, despite Milwaukee being the divisional champ, they have the same price to win the National League pennant. Are we underestimating Milwaukee? Are we giving too much credence to the Amazons? We will find out starting today uh, between the Brewers and the Mets. I will just say this as well. Again, as we have seen in the expanded postseason in the National League, the pennant winner each of the two years of the expanded playoff format has been a wild card team. The Phillies living up to Red October last year. We had an all wild card team face off in the NLCS a season ago. Actually, we've had it both 
of the years yep. in the NLCS. The Phillies over the Padres in 2022. The D-backs over the Phils a season ago. We've got a lot of wild card teams playing good baseball as of this moment. Let's go to the National League pennant odds. Well, I guess we're, no, we're not coming up on the break. We still have over a minute. Let's go to the National League pennant odds, Joe, because it's always been this year a tier of two. It's been the Dodgers and the Phillies. At a time, it was the Dodgers and the Braves, but Atlanta struggled to start the year, and injuries kind of derailed the overall estimation of their season. Because it is a tier of two, plus 165, plus 175, a drop-off even of where San Diego is as the hefty favorite to knock off Atlanta in this wild card round. Do you think there's value on the other teams outside of L.A. or Philly, or are the odds correct? And it's going to be one of those two divisional champs. Yeah, uh, well, it, it certainly, the, the market certainly thinks so. I, we've been screaming the Padres have great value over the last month. Now they're down to 5-1 to one on that uh, on that graphic there. Uh, and, and I'm telling you right now, the more games they win, the less chance you're going to have of getting them at this price. So if you haven't done so already, I do think the Padres expect them. To, there's no reason to think they won't continue the hot streak yeah. that they're on right now. Again, the best team in baseball since the All-Star break. That is San Diego, 5-1 to one number, a number that has grown shorter and shorter over the last few weeks. Now to the American League side of things in the wild card round next. Live right here on the early line on Sports Grid. We continue our MLB playoff preview on the opening day of October, the opening day of the wild card round. All four series begin today. And, Joe, that includes... Some afternoon baseball in Houston, the Astros and the Tigers. So let's start there with the overall series outlook. As we have said, nobody better than Detroit since the end of August, since the beginning of September, however you want to slice it. What the Tigers have done to earn a playoff berth is absolutely remarkable, and they will remember this run to end out the regular season despite the result here in the postseason. The Tigers were 62 and 66 on August 22nd. Four games under 500, zero chance. They were going to catch anybody in the wild card. Their two divisional mates in the Royals and the Twins were rolling. The Orioles, if they weren't going to win the American League East, pretty substantial cushion for that top spot. But then the Twins started to struggle. The Royals were on a small slide as well, and Detroit played unreal baseball, 24-11. and 11. Since that time, they were four games below 500 on August 22nd, the best mark and the bigs. Can the Tigers continue the momentum here into October and maybe pull off the upset over a team with a ton of playoff experience and pedigree in the Houston Astros? Yeah, it, it, this is going to be an interesting one. Uh, it's kind of amazing what Detroit has done, given where they were uh, and where they finished here, Ben, is kind of just absolutely uh, crazy here when you <laughs> consider the fact that at August 11th, I believe they were 55 yeah. and 63, if you can believe that. Oh. And then they finish at 31 and 12, which is just hilarious. And they're doing it without any household names whatsoever. People who didn't watch any baseball this year are going to tune into a Tigers game and be like, who the hell is this? Like what? Who? So <laughs> Tyreek Skubal is going to be obviously the Cy Young Award winner in the American League, and rightfully so. He's probably the best pitcher. But I, I think this series, Ben, is won or lost on this game here, believe it or not. I think that's how sure. important this game is. The Astros have exactly who they want on the mound, when they want, who has gotten better as the season went on. Yeah. And I think they have won, what, 14 of his last 16 starts or some crazy number along those lines. You got more yeah. experience with Altuve and Bregman than the entire Detroit Tigers franchise has in the postseason. This is the last hurrah for this group in Houston. The problem is they also don't have the big man, right? Or Albert, we're a little concerned about his knee injury. Mm. That's a concern and worth monitoring on any future bet for uh, for the Houston Astros. But when it all comes down to it, Framber has got the experience. I think he's got the higher yep. ceiling. Uh, and I love Tariq Skubal, but I think this is going to be a very difficult game for them to win game number one against the ace of the Astros. I think Houston wins game one and then in all likelihood wins it rather quickly to nothing. 
And, and that's the disappointing thing, right? It will not diminish mm-hmm. what Detroit did to get into the nope. postseason, what this means for the Tigers, their first playoff berth in a decade since 2014. What a time for Detroit sports, doing something we had not seen in a very long time, both for the Lions and... Now for the Tigers, I won't mention the Pistons and the historic losing skid because we're talking about positive and optimistic things now in the Motor City. But Joe, it is representative, right, of this game, of this series. The Astros are nearly a dollar and a half favorite for game one today, this afternoon in H-Town. But it's actually a shorter number in favor of the Astros than the series overall. Why? Because Tarek Skubal gets the start for Detroit. He is going to win the American League Cy Young Award. He is 18-4 and four this year. Tied for the most wins in baseball. He's got a 2-3-9 ERA. Second best in baseball. Only behind Chris Sale. He has been lights out. He has been exactly what this young Tigers team needs. He is an ace to the letter of the word. But he's going up against Framber Valdez that since the end of June has also pitched like a Cy Young contender. You are correct, Joe. Houston as a club has won 14 of the last 16 starts that Valdez has made (laughs) since the end of June. Valdez himself has won 10 of those 14 games. This is what you want. This is playoff baseball. This is two aces battling it out. It's why the total is six and a half. And I don't think we see more than four runs. I will say this, between Mm -hmm. Detroit and Houston, you mentioned a a couple of names probably that not many people know around Major League Baseball. Riley Green, Matt Beerling, guys that have got it done all year long for the Tigers. Where would Detroit be? Where would this series be, at least in the odds, expectation, and in our mind, if the Tigers did not trade Jack Flaherty at the trade deadline at the end of August. If they had, or end of July, rather, if they had two bona fide frontline starting pitchers, this could be a very different assessment. And the Tigers, even without Flaherty, got to this point. Tarek Skubal, a big reason why. Joe, Joe, I think I agree with you. I think the Astros probably win, and I think the Astros might even win this in a sweep. It's plus 195 for Houston to win this two games to none in the best of three series. And I think there should be some appreciation and enjoyment for the Tigers, even if that feels kind of like a loser mentality. (laughs) But it is, I think, a representation for the Tigers of promise this year and promise for many more years to come. Oh, by the way, A.J. Hinch revenge set, the former manager of the Astros during the cheating scandal, now back in Houston as the skipper of the Tigers. Wondering if there's going to be any trash can uh, banging there. I think that should be very, very, very interesting when Altuve is up. That is for sure. But uh, the Astros, best American League ERA since May 1st. The top three guys, hands down, are better than the top three guys in a rotation for the Detroit Tigers. I think that's where this series gets won or lost. Yep, and the Astros have prevailed through some injuries in their starting staff as Mm -hmm. well. We'll see about the status of Jordan Alvarez for this set and beyond. Again, when it comes to playoff pedigree, none of the teams in this 12-team field on either side of the league have more of it, proven experience, than Houston. They have been to seven consecutive ALCSs, seven consecutive, Mm. and they will try to start that march back to that point today with a victory at home over the Tigers. The other AL wild card set. The other American League wild card series between two rather young rosters, the Baltimore Orioles and the Kansas City Royals. To Camden Yards, we go. And Joe, despite Baltimore being just an even 500 since the All-Star break, using all three wins against the Twins to end out the regular season to get to above 500 in the month of September, the O's have built up a rather large cushion for what is that top spot and home field advantage in the American League postseason to begin. Five games clear of KC. Things got a little bit dicey for Kansas City, although we thought they were a shoe into the postseason in the second to last week of the regular season. They dropped seven straight games. But then a sweep 
and then a victory to end out the regular season against the Braves. The O's a pretty hefty favorite to win this wild card set, a best of three series that begins today in the Charm City. Do you think it's more competitive than that minus 172 series outright price would say in favor of Baltimore? No, I don't. I think this is an easy sweep for uh, Baltimore here, uh, mostly because Baltimore is not the Chicago White Sox. Uh, had they been the Chicago White Sox, I would definitely be on the Royals since the Royals mm. were just about 500 against everybody else they played this year, only they went 12-1 and one against the White Sox. In fact, the White Sox, the argument can be made, is really the only reason why we're seeing Detroit and Kansas City in the playoffs right now this year. Uh, and that's a fair argument to make. So I just don't think the Royals have been limping in over the last uh, month here, Ben, into the season. I love Bobby Witt Jr. I think the kid is uh, is an absolute superstar here. But I don't trust any other part of this Royals team, nor do I trust the bullpen. I think Corbin Burns goes out there in game one, gets it done for him. I think this is an easy 2 nothing sweep here. Unfortunately for the Royals, uh, they played their best baseball too soon in the season. And this has just been a struggle down the stretch. So I do think that uh, I do think the Orioles get it done 2 uh, nothing here. And this is the promise for Baltimore, right? You take your postseason lumps as a young club. How do you learn from it? How do you gain that experience? And then how do you get better year over year? The O's were the number one seed in the American League postseason a year ago. They won more than 100 games. And they were bounced in a sweep in the division series by the Texas Rangers. Texas ended up winning a World Series. So there is comfort in that for the O's. But this is the time to take what you learned a year ago and put it into practice and make it a playoff success story. Baltimore is the hefty favorite. Corbin Burns gets the start today. For most of the year, Burns was an AL Cy Young consideration. Struggle a little bit down the stretch. He'll go up against Cole Reagans, who has also been very good this year for KC. Six and a half the total for both of our opening games in the wild card rounds in the American League. Joe, when you look at the Royals, this is their first playoff berth since their World Series championship in 2015. Not a very different team than this one, but Salvador Perez does remain. They have the hits leader in MLB this year in Bobby Witt. Seth Lugo was great to start the year, more than likely going to be pitching in this series at some point. But you can see what the odds say and hear in the tail of the tape. The Orioles are plus 190 to win this series in two games. The Astros plus 195 to win in two. The Brewers plus 250. The series odds from a correct score component not out for the Braves and the Padres because of the uncertainty around Chris Sale's status. All to say that plus 190 price for a Baltimore sweep over KC is the shortest number for a sweep in the correct score market throughout any of these four wild card series. Yeah, and the problem that I have with Kansas City is I do think Kansas City on some level, Ben, is much better suited for a 162-game season than they are for a three-game set. Uh, I, You know, I love Waka. I love Lugo. I love Reagans. Very good. But we also watch them barely hit 200 down the stretch as a team. And the other problem that you need in in short series is you need the ability and the threat of the long ball. Nobody has that threat better than Baltimore outside of the Yankees, who had 235 yep. home runs this year. That is not what the Royals do. If they don't manufacture runs, they don't score. That's a problem in a short series in the playoffs. Joe, think about the September records for all the 12 MLB teams. Tigers 17-8, and eight, Padres 16-8, and eight, Mets 17-9. and nine. Even the Brewers were pretty good, 13-13. and 13. I mean, that's one of the worst records of this all. The Orioles 13-12. and 12. The Royals the only team with a losing record in September into the postseason at 11-14. and 14. Our third and final hour on TEL is up next. The opening day of October, a day we have been getting ready for all year long with our MLB insider and the host of Newswire. It's Craig Mish joining us live right here on this Tuesday on the early line craig all summer long all mlb regular season long has built to this point playoff baseball starts on the very first day of this month of october how excited are you 
Very excited, and I feel like these series are going to be really unpredictable. So I'll give my best leans, I'll give my best opinions, but okay. I, I simply don't recall going into a postseason where we just have not had dominant teams in the regular season. No one has been overly dominant. Anything can happen. Nobody got to 100 this year around MLB, the first time in nearly a decade. So a significant day as October begins, Craig. But yesterday, a sad day in Major League Baseball as well, with the passing of the all-time hits leader, Charlie Hustle, Pete Rose. A complicated legacy, of course, in MLB, banished from the sport for betting on his own team, the Reds, when he was a player manager back in the mid to late 80s. But his accomplishments on the diamond, those are hard to argue. How do you remember Pete Rose and what he meant to the sport of baseball? Yeah, look, he was, you know, for his era and for his time before the game changed in a different way. Uh, you know, he's the hit king. I mean, all-time hit king, played at a very high level, basically as long as anybody has ever played the game. And then things got complicated after that, of course, is with him as a manager and the whole uh, you know gambling scandal and everything that happened like that. And then certainly later on, made his way in Las Vegas, signing autographs every single day. It's amazing that he could do that for about 20 years every day, that people would still come in and get his autographs all those years later. Uh, my best experience that I could have with him was uh, probably about seven, eight years ago, maybe a little bit longer. We invited him at the time. I was uh, hosting and producing a television show uh, on Fox Sports Florida at the time, which is now Bally, and he came into our studio. He actually came into our studio, and we recorded basically a whole show with him. And, guys, the one thing that I could say in doing that show for about 10 years, he was the only guest that we had ever on, that we ever had on that stayed for two hours after the show ended, and we just sat there and talked baseball. It was really one of those – Incredible moments for me learning so much about the game with him there. There was no doubt his love for mm. the game. Pete Rose has sadly passed away at the age of 83. All right, Craig, now we fire around to all four of our wild card sets that begin the postseason that start today. A quadruple header of baseball on the opening day of October. Four, that's like all the bases. It's time for the daily bases postseason edition. <laughs> Craig, <laughs> you got to bring in Joe Lisi for the opposition. Joe Lisi running right now. He sounds like he's running for something. I don't know what. Come on, like man. That's ugly. The guy got his car stolen and you're taking shots? That's I, tough. What? He got his car stolen? Oh, my gosh. That's terrible. Uh, when did that happen? He thinks, I had no idea. He thinks it's because the picks were bad on Saturday in college football that a loyal sports grid viewer boosted that, like, he was yelling his at me. Yeah, yeah, listen, <laughs> tough, Florida. tough for the guy. Wasn't He'll me. find it back. He'll find it back <laughs> in baseball. All right, Craig, let's start <laughs> with the first of our NL wild card series to get underway today in Milwaukee. The Mets win the opening game of the doubleheader yesterday to clinch the playoff berth. The Brew Crew, pretty hefty favorite for this opening game. But, Craig, in terms of the outright prices for a wild card set, this is the closest margin between Milwaukee and New York. How close do you expect the series to be between the Mets and the Brewers? We haven't seen a lot of wild card series in the past go three games. I'm not really sure why that has been the case. I anticipate a lot of these games uh, going three this time around. I don't think we're going to see a lot of sweeps. These teams are very evenly matched. The Mets have to be feeling great about themselves going into this. Milwaukee has been extraordinary at home. This series, guys, is two close to call and in a lot of these mm. series i'm going to feel like this I, I obviously will have an opinion on something before we get done with this but honestly <laughs> they're very they're very evenly matched uh what, what what i find fascinating in particular ben about all of these games today i would have to go back and look historically and i understand postseason baseball the scoring goes down six and a half total six and a half yeah. total Seven total and a seven and a half. There isn't a single eight total on the board for game one of the Major League Baseball postseason. That tells you all you need to know. Even the odds makers don't know who's going to win these games. Mm. Uh, not very much fun. I mean, congratulations, Braves. Uh, you won the second game. You're in the postseason. But now Chris Sale, back injuries, rotation is a mess. Padres have been waiting. Uh, I believe they're the highest seed, Craig, so they get all games at home regardless now in the wild card. So advantage Padres, but does that mean they win the series? 
Uh, yeah, Joe, heavy advantage Padres, but I again, this is a series where the Braves are going to win. They're going to win a game. I mean, you saw what happened mm. yesterday with their offense when it exploded and Ozzie Albies went nuts. Too much offense on the Braves to get swept. I think your thinking is probably accurate. It does feel like the Padres should be favored to win the series. But if I was going to bet this, I would wait to see what happens after game one. If you're going to bet the Padres, there's mm. no reason to do that now. Wait to see if the Braves pull one off and then take the other side. Another, I mean, again... Okay. I, you know, I, I hate to start off with this in the first day of the postseason, but these these series are extraordinarily close. Yeah, yeah, absolutely so. And with the status of Chris Sale uncertain, although maybe unlikely to pitch in this series, could flip this set on its head in San Diego. Craig, there has been no hotter team in the month of September or since the end of August than the Detroit Tigers to rally to earn their first playoff bid in a decade can they continue the momentum today and in this series against a team with a ton of playoff pedigree in the houston astros yeah a couple of weeks ago i think we talked about this we went over world series odds and playoff odds and i'm like detroit is not in take them because they're playing the best baseball so i think they absolutely have a shot i think it's going to be tough for them to win in game one i understand they have Tariq Skubal. But Houston has Framber Valdez. This guy has been amazing yeah. in the postseason. I would think that this is the one game of those four that goes under the total. I cannot imagine a lot of runs. Six and mm. a half is that number. Craig, let's finish with the O's and the Royals. Who wins this wild card round? Yeah, uh, this is the one series I do think uh, the Orioles win the series. That that would be the way that I would lean yeah. here. Kansas City didn't play great in September. Uh, you know, the Orioles have burns in game one, a lot of offense. I'll take the Orioles to win this one in three. Some conviction from Craig, and we'll see you on Newswire in a little bit more on the early line next.